Thank you, Ray. Hi, this is Ray. Today I'll be diving with Sean. We'll be <laughs> targeting invasive lionfish and gag groupers. Yep. So join us on our journey to the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. All right. As Ray just mentioned, we're diving off the coast of North Carolina today. This is off of Wilmington, and we're going to several different shipwrecks. So this is one of the crew members here, and he's going to tie off the anchor to the shipwreck. So they drop the anchor off the bow of the, the boat, and then he dives down and ties it to the shipwreck. And what that does is that gives us a line that we can follow to go down to the shipwreck and then once we come back up as well. So that's a very important part of wreck diving, shipwreck diving, is that anchor line being tied off really well. You ready? Heck yeah. <laughs> This first wreck we're visiting is called the City of Houston, and this was a shipwreck in 1878, I think it was, where the ship was caught in a huge, huge storm on its way from New York City to Galveston, Texas, and it had passengers and cargo on board. And during the middle of the night, the waves pretty much doused the coal-burning fires, and the ship was pretty much being tossed around until daybreak, and then another ship spotted them and everybody was saved by the other ship. So they didn't have to get in the water, they didn't have to put out the lifeboats. So this thing has been sitting here for 150 years and it's mostly sanded in. It was rediscovered in the 80s and there's still a ton of artifacts here if you can get down into the sand and find them. So what we have left is just a, a small remnant of, of a huge ship that's still visible. These lionfish are extremely invasive and they are really, really detrimental to the ecosystem on the reef in the Atlantic and Caribbean. So we'll talk more about them later. The most prominent feature of this shipwreck is the engine here. And this thing rises probably about 30 feet above the sand and it's still intact and it's still upright after all these years. So that was a pretty cool feature of this wreck. Here's a shot of the anchor that Jay set for us on this wreck. So you can see all he did was, was set it on the wreck and that gives us a lifeline up and down to the wreck and the boat above. And here, Crystal and Mike are checking out that engine that, that's sticking up right there. And there's a few fish hiding inside of there. Even though we're in the Atlantic, we find a lot of Caribbean fish here because of the Gulf Stream, they get blown up and onto our coast. Here I was following a soap fish. This is Ripticus saponaceus. Cool fish, that's a reef fish. Ray didn't shoot anything with the spear gun on the first dive, so on the second dive we're going to switch over to the pole spear. On the way up the anchor line to finish my dive I ran into a bunch of amber jacks. This is Seriola du Marili, and these guys are open water fish you see a lot in the Atlantic.
some of the divers had harvested some of these. These are slipper lobsters. This is a Spanish slipper lobster. Skyleridus aquinoctalis. And they're supposed to be a lot sweeter than this, the spiny lobsters are. You can just grab them with your hands or you can lasso them like they did here. I ordered a new band for my pole spear last night. It's supposed to be here Wednesday. All right. You ever used a pole spear? No. Nope. Oh man, that's fun. <laughs> you know, you just pull it back and hold it and let it go. Okay. It's got a rubber. You put the rubber right there. That's. that's you're, gonna, you're gonna show me how to use it? Yeah. All right. We did a second dive on the same shipwreck, and Ray is trying out his new pole spear with his new band and he's actually getting some fish this time. Here I just happen to see a stingray swimming off in the distance. This is probably an Atlantic stingray. This is Daciatus sabina, but I wasn't sure which one. We'll see more of these guys coming up. We also saw a lot of flounder around this wreck, but they are out of season right now. This is probably a southern flounder, Paralichthys, Lethostigma. Ray was passing off his pole spear to me just as a big school of Atlantic spade fish swam by. These are fairly small ones that hang out on the reef or on shipwrecks. They get a lot bigger though and move out to open water. This is Keto Dipteris Faber, one of my favorite species in the Atlantic. This little guy hiding is a spotted moray eel. This is Gymnothorax moringa. Like Ray mentioned back on the boat, my goal for today with pole spearing is to get these lionfish. So this, these are red lionfish, Terois volatans. This is considered, these guys are considered one of the worst marine invasions in history. And so these guys are invasive to the Atlantic and the Caribbean. And like many invasive species, the natural predators don't recognize them as prey items. And so they're multiplying and they're voracious predators. And so what they do is they just snap up all the little tiny fish on a reef and they multiply like crazy. So some places, especially in the Bahamas and areas around the Caribbean, these things will just completely blanket the sea floor. And so many, many places have bounties on them and every diver is encouraged to take them out. So here I am taking a few of them out on this particular shipwreck. Look at the size of this huge lionfish. And I stuck him pretty good right there, but he swam away, and you'll see here in a sec that I find him again and get him again. After taking out as many lionfish as I could find, I start making my way back over to the anchor line and preparing to end my dive. And so here I am at the anchor line. I've got about one minute left of no deco time and I happened to spot another lionfish. And so I barely had enough time to go back down and get one more. The strange thing about these lionfish is when you leave them dead like this, the sharks and the eels will eat them. And so 
they just don't recognize them when they're alive as prey items. And so the hope is if we leave enough dead ones around that they'll start to recognize them as prey items and start taking out the living ones. Here on my way up, I can you can really get a good shot of the bow of this shipwreck. So take a look right there. And you can see the outline. That's been sitting there for 150 years and that's all that's left of it. The Amberjacks were once again streaming along the anchor line towards me. These guys are the intermediate host for a nasty tapeworm. It's like a parasitic tapeworm. It's called Trypanorhync pleuroceri. And you may hear it called spaghetti worm, but these Amberjacks just get filled with the larval stage. And so you don't want to eat these, even though they're all over the place and they look like good targets for fish species. You don't want to eat these Amberjacks. The next day out here, we are at a shipwreck called the Hyde. This was an artificial wreck sent, sunk to be an artificial reef. This was a dredge sunk in the 80s. And so when we get down here, we see that there's not very good visibility. So let's take a look. I land here at the bow of the Hyde. And this is a really awesome shipwreck. This, this ship is sitting upright in about 85 feet of water. And it's just a huge, like 218 foot, gigantic steel ship. And you can swim through a couple places. There's all kinds of cool stuff on the deck. You can stay on the deck, you can go down to the sand. All kinds of cool stuff on this wreck that you can see. But one thing you're guaranteed to see on the hide is sharks. So as soon as I get down here, I turn around and I see some sharks off the wreck a little bit. And so I go to check them out. I quickly spot my first shark. This is a sandbar shark. This is Carcharhinus plumbius, and they have that really, really tall, large dorsal fin. And in the background, you can see another shark species. This is a sand tiger shark. This is Carcharius taurus, and these guys have a much smaller dorsal fin, and they have a second dorsal fin also. And I've got a bunch more of these coming up. If you've never done scuba diving before, it really offers a ton of different things you can do with it. So for example, we're here on a big shipwreck. And so what are some of the things you can do as a scuba diver on a shipwreck? Well, you can just kind of cruise around the shipwreck like we're doing here and checking it out. You can shine your flashlight in all the different nooks and crannies and look at the tiny little diversity of life that you see in there, huge diversity of life. You can penetrate the wreck, you can check out some of the gear that's on the wreck and try to identify what it might have been. You can look for artifacts in the sand or in the wreck. You can look for shark's teeth in the sand outside the wreck. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Here you see that Ray is looking for spearfishing opportunities. That's why he's out here. Crystal's out here because she wants to see large wildlife. So she wants to see sharks. We've got another diver with us who's really interested in some of the technical stuff like he's got a rebreather and some of the very technical gear that's available for scuba diving so lots of opportunities for things you can do just in the in the shipwreck style of scuba diving and of course the one thing you can do with shipwreck scuba diving is treasure hunting so that's another thing you can do for me personally i just like to go out and be out there and see some cool fish and of course make some videos This is maybe an 8x8 opening here, and I do drop into this and take a look around, but I don't stick around very long. 
So penetrating wrecks is something that you can do, you can specialize in as a scuba diver, and it never really appealed to me. It does sound kind of cool, but it's just a huge risk multiplier going underwater and trying to find your way through a shipwreck, as cool as it may sound. Ray's back on the spear gun today on the hide, and he took a couple shots at some groupers down there that he saw. But they were kind of on the side of the ship, and when they're out in the open like that, it's really hard to get them. The best time to get them, the best way to get them, is when you find them in like an overhang or something, and they're just kind of hanging in there. You can sneak up on them, but uh, he's just reloading his gun right here. This spot looks much more promising for a grouper under this overhang. And Ray takes a shot and he does get one, but somehow it manages to come off the spear. So we were celebrating a little bit prematurely there. Here's another sand tiger shark showing those two dorsal fins. Another sandbar shark showing that single large dorsal fin. These guys are all often much faster and more active looking. Sand tiger sharks swim very, very slowly during the day, and they are often described as sleep swimming. So they're half asleep when they're out doing this during the day, and a lot of times if I'm over here looking at something or not paying attention, I'll turn around and there'll be one like a foot away. They just kind of mosey along and don't really care about what's going on. Ray was my dive buddy for both days diving because we were both spearfishing and this is kind of a crossover concrete scuba diving video but I did run into Mike and Crystal and they were swimming along the deck of the hide here and so I swam with them for a few minutes. These guys zip by really really quickly and I think these are king mackerel Scumbera Morris Kavala. Uh -huh. 
Giant Barracuda are also very common in the Atlantic. This is Safarina Barracuda. As I'm starting my ascent to end my dive, you can see the silhouette of the bow here. The visibility was pretty bad today because there was a lot of marine plant life in the water, so visibility wasn't very good today. Barracuda are often hanging around the anchor line when we come up. And take a look at this guy's dorsal fin, it's completely flat, and then once he comes a little bit closer, it stands up, and then once he realizes that I'm not a threat, it sets back down. And then he keeps going. For our second dive, we did the Markham, which is another dredge and another artificial reef just a few hundred feet from the hide. And so right away, I saw a stingray, and he these guys are just kind of in the sand and remaining motionless. So they can really scare you if you get too close to them and you don't, you don't realize they're there, and they just like in a big puff of sand move away. The Markham is another dredge that was sunk as an artificial reef project. This was a really, really big one. This one was about 340 feet long. And the Markham spent most of its time in the Great Lakes, working up there. And then it was brought down in the early 90s, I think it was, down to North Carolina. And it was dropped right next to the Hyde as another artificial reef project. But it's such a, a large ship that it had to be sunk on its side so that it would actually fit underwater and it wouldn't disrupt boat traffic. And here's another stingray that I found. Ray took a shot at this porgy right here, and I was nearby with my pole spear, and so I went over and tried to see if I could spear it with my pole spear. I took this one home and cooked it up. It was real good. We're getting ready to end our dive and the Hyde and the Markham are probably the two most popular shipwrecks off of North Carolina. And so I didn't see a single lionfish on either one. And that's just a testament that the, the divers are doing a very good job of keeping the lionfish populations off of those two wrecks.
not like this wind. Uh, that is scary. Alright, got it.